Welcome back to my round two game from the Fujairo Blitz Tournament. This one I'm playing Grandmaster Arkady Nidic, who is currently ranked number 80 in the world. So I knew I would have my work cut out for me in this game. And coming into this game, I really just wanted to enjoy myself, have fun, play some enterprising chess. Not every day you get to play an elite Grandmaster like this. So definitely wanted to seize opportunity. And we shake hands, the game begins. I opted for pawn e4 on move one. He plays a Sicilian and I play knight to c3, which is one of my favorite pet lines against a Sicilian. Uh, this can very often go into a Grand Prix attack after knight c6, bishop to b5. I did give a lecture about this line a few years ago for the St. Louis Chess Club. And already he begins to hesitate, which in the moment, I thought it was a, a good sign that he's maybe caught off guard in opening, but in hindsight, I think he was just trying to choose what line to play. Uh, the main line is knight to d4, but he plays knight to f6, which is a secondary move. I take on c6, and then he does have a choice which pawn to take back with. He takes away from the center. I play pawn to d3. And one reason that black takes away from the center is to accelerate development of the light square bishop, also open up the queen. But going forward from here, I was already feeling like very comfortable. I played this position a lot in uh, online games, and I'm going for a Grand Prix attack structure with f4, preparing knight f3, and castling. And very often I'll play this sort of structure against amateur players and just have a very good win percentage. But this time I'm playing this against a very strong Grandmaster. So I was curious in the moment what he's going to come up with. And he plays a kind of surprising move, pawn to c4, sacrificing a pawn in an effort to weaken my structure. And now I have to decide, do I take the pawn on c4, double my pawns and allow a queen trade, or do I maybe just continue with development? So I took a moment here to consider my options, but I went ahead and snagged the material. And we trade queens on d1. I take with the king to ensure my knight still defends the pawn on e4. And then he plays pawn e5. So this is yet another pawn sacrifice. We're uh, still less than 10 moves into the game. And he's already sacrificing two pawns with black from the Sicilian defense. Not something you see every day from a top grandmaster. But e5, I think, is a very thematic move. He's trying to accelerate development of his dark square bishop. And if I take the pawn, then he'll have them move knight g4 to attack f2 and also threaten to recapture on e5. So I was trying to figure out how to deal with this. I do decide to take on e5. And uh, yeah, after knight to g4, I play a delayed bond cloud, king to e2. And I'm not so worried at this point with my king being in the center, especially because queens are off the board, that my king is just a useful piece, preventing knight f2, trying to get my rooks connected as quickly as possible. And he took a moment here before recapturing on e5, uh, maybe debating whether to play bishop b4 or bishop e6 first, but eventually he does recapture on e5. I quickly play pawn to b3 reinforcing my c4 pawn, also preparing to develop my dark square bishop. And he plays bishop to b4, attacking my knight. And now I uh, pretty quickly play bishop to b2, simply defending the knight, also getting the bishop to a nice square on the long diagonal where the knight on e5 or the pawn on g7 could be eventual targets. So I was feeling very good here. I'm up over a minute on the clock. I'm up a pawn, and I have a position, even though my pawns are doubled, I have an isolated pawn in e4. Um, everything is defended, and I have easy development with knight f3, and the rook's coming in very soon. So he decides to castle. I quickly play knight to f3, offering the trade of the knights. And I was really just trying to simplify if black takes on f3, I'd be very happy to recapture with a pawn to uh, have my e4 pawn supported, also to open the g-file. Thought maybe later the g7 pawn could come under fire. 
And really, the, the ball is in box court what to do here, because if he doesn't want to capture on f3, then he either has to allow the trade or retreat, which he does with knight to g6. And this is not a move that I was initially expecting, but when he played this move, I realized this is actually a pretty strong idea, because he avoids the trade and he's preparing ideas of knight f4 to harass my king, also attack the undefended pawn on g2. So I definitely had to be careful here with black's threats. Also had to just be cognizant of the fact that e-file could definitely be used by one of black's rooks in the future. There's ideas of bishop g4 and f5. And from my perspective, I really just wanted to get my rooks into play as quickly as possible. I played rook a d1, getting to the only open file in the position. He plays rook to e8, aligning with my king. I slide over to f2, getting off the file of the black rook. And now I'm just preparing rook to e1. And if I can get this one last move in, then everything will be solid. I'll be up a pawn, and I'm still keeping the time advantage as well. So I think this position is very critical. Like black has to do something right away to ensure that I can't just keep everything defended and be up a pawn going into the late stages of the middle game. And we can see by the body language here that, uh, yeah, he seemed a little bit dejected, but he plays this move pawn f5 while leaning back. So I'm not sure if he was dejected or maybe just content with uh, with his compensation in the position. And when he played pawn f5, he did briefly look at me. I was trying to just stay focused on the position. But here I'm in a bit of a predicament because I can't easily play e5. Of course, he would just take the pawn. And the move I wanted to play rook he1 would just lose back the pawn because he can take and then take and then take. And, uh, and black is keeping the initiative in that line as well. So I took uh, a decent amount of time here trying to figure out how to deal with this annoying pawn tension. But after somewhat of a long think, I do take on f5. He recaptures with the bishop, and I play knight to d4, which is a nice multi-purpose move, not only defending the c2 pawn, but also attacking the undefended bishop and undefended pawn on c6. So I was still feeling like things are under control here. Of course, we can see by the eval var that uh, engine already likes black, but it's yeah, a very difficult position to correctly evaluate. He plays this move rook f8, so getting back to the file of my king. And now, of course, there's all these nasty discoveries. He's threatening to take the pawn with check. So I had to be super, super careful here, trying to weigh my options. Do I move my king off the file? Do I take the bishop on f5? And there was a point earlier in the game, I was up two minutes on the clock, but now I'm falling lower on time than my opponent and still in like a really tricky situation. Where can I hide my king? I really wanted to hide it on g1, but then there's ideas of bishop to c5. I thought king g3 would be too risky. And I felt like a frozen Rosen in this situation, paralyzed on what move to make. But I do decide to take on f5. He recaptures. And now I still have to find a square for my king. And it seemed like every option wasn't so appetizing, but I play king to e3. Now my king is completely naked in the center, and he starts with this move knight h4, which uh, basically throws a punch, attacks my pawn on g2, threatening to play knight takes g2 with check. And even though I'm still up a pawn, it just seems like there's a lot of issues now with my king side being attacked, my king just clear target in the center. And I was trying to decide, like, do I try and hold on to the pawn? Do I try and run with my king? I start with the move a3. I was trying to provoke a trade on c3. But of course, he doesn't have to trade. And he retreats to e7 with the bishop. And I respond with the move knight e4, which I think is a nice centralizing move. 
keeping an eye on the g5 square. I am allowing him to take on g2, but then I wouldn't mind opening the g file for my rook. So he responds with rook to e8, using the x-ray vision on e file. I play king to d2, trying to run to safety. He plays rook f4, attacking my knight on e4. I'm falling below 10 seconds, trying to figure out how to save my knight. I play rook d e1. He takes on g2. I play rook e2, saving the rook, attacking the knight. And he hesitates here before playing knight to h4, and I play rook g1, which I instantly regretted because this allows black pretty simple tactic. He's making sure the tactics work. He forks, I play king to e3. And even though I'm counterattacking the rook on f4, my rook was also attacked. So now I'm down a rook, trying to salvage the position. Then he simplifies rook e4, king e4, bishop f6 check. And yeah, it's not looking good for white in this case. I'm basically surviving on the increment, but not really surviving in the position. Everything simplifies, and after the dust settles, he is up a bishop. And now you can see from his, his expressions that he's essentially waiting for me to resign and looking off to the side. I keep playing. I was still fantasizing about maybe creating one last stalemate trick. But uh, yeah, we, we see the Grandmaster technique in this position. I gave him a free pawn in a5. And unfortunately, I don't even have rook a1 because the bishop controls a1. I centralize my king. And then he plays pawn a4, trying to just destroy my structure, which he does. Wins back the pawn on c4, and yeah, I had enough. I threw in the towel, and the game ends decisively, losing after 37 moves in what was a really, really interesting hard-fought game. Uh, it was a fun battle, and I really wasn't disappointed after this game. I think there's a lot of lessons to take away. And before I wrap up the video, I do want to address one of the most critical moments of the game. And it was in this moment right before I blundered with this move rook g1. Uh, I think I had seconds on the clock before I played this move, of course, completely missing knight f3. I was really just fixated on targeting the g7 pawn. But it turns out in this position, if I play the best move, then white is objectively for choice. And the best move would have been to play knight d6. Not the easiest move to spot, but it's a really nice idea to unleash my rook, pinning the bishop, also attacking black's rook on e8. And this would essentially force black to play rook d8. And I would take on e7, and after takes, I would find safety for my king on c1. And meanwhile, just having a very active rook attacking a7 and g7. The game could go on from here. Black has rook f7, uh, but white is probably just for choice with having a really nice bishop and having potential to still use the g file as well. So perhaps a small missed opportunity, but uh, again, it can be hard to find such precise moves in, uh, in blitz game, especially when time is very low. So uh, yeah, this put me at one out of two going into round three. As always, I hope you enjoy the content. If you have questions, leave them below. If you like the content, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for round three. I'll see you guys soon.